it's going to hit record. So okay. if you want to crack a cold, crack a cold <laughs> open with the boys. <laughs> God, why weren't you recording then? I am. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Well, Matt, you know what it's like. 2018 <laughs> flew by. It was a roller coaster year for us. Yeah. In December, we launched a podcast. We did another episode, and now we're here. We're third time lucky. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the boys are back in town. The internet boys. The boys yeah. are back in the internet. They're all talking town. about us online. Did you know that? Um, yeah, I did. Did you notice we got some new likes on our Facebook page? <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty good. That, yeah, that was cool. Thank you for everyone who did that. Yeah, um, that was good. I actually, I know I said to you, let's you can do an open. Yeah. But um, I wanted to start off by saying to people that anyone who's listening, it would be awesome if you could, like we said last time, um, just show a friend our show. Because <laughs> show them. Just show, Turn just your phone show to it them. to them. Just open the podcast app on your phone. Um, and show it to them. So Swivel your phone the app. 128 degrees in yeah. favour of them. Show them the cover. Yeah. <laughs> Don't tell them anything. <laughs> um, yeah, but if you like it, leave us a review, rate us, um, recommend the show to a friend, because it does help and it is starting to get the ball rolling a little yeah, bit. Yeah, so, totally. you know. Um, Upload a Vine. Yeah. yeah. They're, aren't they make, they're making Vine too, aren't they? Do you hear about this? It's called... Um, the Vine Ending. Find two. Let's find. Oh no, it's uh, I can't remember. So this has got no flow to it at all. But there are people who made Vine are making another short video app, um, which is good. I suppose. Why did they? Why did they bin Vine in the first place? Um, didn't they sell it to Twitter and then Twitter closed it down? Yeah, but why did people do that? We've, we've bought this yeah. thing for like 1.2 billion and we're closing it down. <laughs> well, I don't know. <laughs> so I'm not what? really sure about that. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we should make our own short video app. What would we call it? Uh, Welcome to the internet, colon. That's too... It needs to be, like, snappy and quick. Yeah, so witty. So W-T-T-I, colon. Yeah. No, that's just it. <laughs> that's it. Witty. Witty, colon. Because it's witty. Yeah, witty I think dot... I just smacked my, my, my pop guard. Witty so. dot internet. That should be it. That's probably taken. Probably yeah. not. I don't know. Anyway. <laughs> cool. <laughs> What a cold open. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> You're listening to the best podcast on the internet. Welcome to the internet. Drink some water. <laughs> um, yeah, so, Ed, you mentioned to me that we're going to have a bit of a focus on um, conspiracy theories this this episode. Well, I mean, there's there's going to be some goof stories from the past. Yeah. Um, not the future. Stuff that's <laughs> happened, not okay. stuff I'm predicting. Um, but then, yeah, there's some wacky conspiracy theories I just wanted to go through later on, so that'll probably be the second half of the show. Yeah, okay. Um, but first of all, I wanted to discuss um, the internet in general, right? It's <laughs> okay. Two, it's 2019. <laughs> We've got about an hour, Ed. <laughs> Is this going to be long enough? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I wanted to discuss an idea, right? So, I, I, there's a couple of things I wanted yeah. to... Like, did we discuss, like, who would we pick as spokesperson of the internet like ambassador of the net i think that was in the bit that i cut out of the oh. first show well yeah. i really wanted to discuss like our nominations okay. for yeah. all right uh, ma- man or woman of the internet okay like, like who would personify the net what just i don't really know to be honest because there's so many the internet is multifaceted so okay what about what, the um what if we had like a round table of people yeah, like a governing council of yeah. the internet. <laughs> the council yeah. of... The, the, I don't know. I was yeah. gonna, I was gonna, the Illuminati of the net. Yeah, the um, Illuminati TP. Oh, no, God. that doesn't work. HTTP <laughs> Illuminati. Yeah, <laughs> the HTT... No, I can't get there. I don't, I don't know what it is. Um, yeah, but then you'd have to have... Could you have like a dark... Council of the internet for the deep web. <laughs> <laughs> right. This is another question I was going to bring up. Let's make it. Let, yeah. The difference between the dark web and the deep web. Are they the same place? Yeah. They're the are same they two, thing. Are they? Oh, damn it. I was hoping you say no. <laughs> okay. Right. So we, like, we can, oh, um, I mean, no. Yeah. <laughs> they're not the same thing. <laughs> no, they are. But as I far think, as I know, anyway. Okay. Well, tell you what. One. Wait, one, no. I think they actually might be different things. Uh, isn't the deep web. The deep web is publicly accessible, but not like listed on search right. engines. And yeah. the dark web isn't even there. just yeah, <laughs> it's really dark. You need a torch <laughs> to see it. Um, mean... I think that actually is two <clears throat> different things. 
Right. Apparently, there's a third one called the Shadow Web. I've just, oh my I've god! Just found out that one. <laughs> well, let's let's put that on hold and talk about that next time. We'll yeah. research okay. the Shadow Web, the Deep Web, and the Dark Web. And it's probably like a it's yeah. I was some other one. I was right actually. The Dark Web is websites that are anonymously hosted, only available, um, only available, only accessible by using um, stuff like the Open Road and things like that. Yeah. Deep Web is just websites that aren't indexed by search engines. Right. Um. Yeah. Well, but you actually you need to use the open road to access either of them, so that would technically mean they come under the same umbrella. Cool. Have you ever been on the dark web? No. No? No. <laughs> Why oh. would I? Okay. <laughs> what, what would be on there to, like... How would I find it exactly? You couldn't Google it. You need to... That would just, just, <laughs> that would just make you a need regular to web. install the open road. It's just a web browser that hides your IP address. Oh, okay. Right. Yeah, then you can go on the dark web. Matt, are you talking about... Like, we're going to get in trouble with big tech now. <laughs> yeah. They were listening. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Um, what? <laughs> <laughs> have you seen? The, have you seen the film? Enemy you of the know State? the answer. To, I actually have seen that. Enemy of the State. So long ago that I don't remember. This what is how the film it. begins, right? Except yeah, okay. neither of us are Will Smith, right? We. Talk oh, I thought you were about to explain how <laughs> no, the film begins. No, no I'm talking about our version. <laughs> this is the how reboot. the film begins. Will Smith and did you say Will Smith? Will Smith and Gene Hackman. And Gene Hackman have a podcast <laughs> and no, they talk about the. Dark you're not web. listening to what I'm saying here. I'm <laughs> okay, saying the re the 2019 <laughs> reboot. Of enemy of the state is going to be. be me and you. We talk about the deep web. Yeah, it gets picked up on a big server somewhere, okay. and then the US government are after us. Yeah, enemy of the state 2019. What about if um, I'm recording this while I've got a VPN connected? <laughs> so, I mean, they won't be able yeah, to tell but, where I am. But Matt, you, Matt, you know <laughs> that you that VPNs don't actually work probably in the film. In a film, it'd be like we use some. Spe- the government uses a special tool that VPNs don't work. Against. Yeah, they use um, they use. GUIs made in Visual Basic. Exactly. Yeah, they yeah, yeah they make UIs that no one's ever seen before. Really obscure, yeah, <laughs> really obscure CSI joke out for all you CSI fans out there. <laughs> Found a really good picture that explains quite well what the um the three different sections of the internet are. So you've got the surface web, right? Which, according to this, is Bing, Google, and Wikipedia. <laughs> um, then the deep web, which contains ninety percent of the information on the internet. Um, right. But it's not accessible by, and I'm not making this phrase up, surface web crawlers. Right. Okay. <laughs> that, that literally Hang sounds on, like a spider. How much, what's the second part 90%. Of 90%. Of, of the information on the internet is on the deep web. So these are things that are on the internet, but you can't get to. Without right? using So things special... that are hosted on the internet. Yeah. Right, because the majority of the content on how the internet much... isn't stuff that you and I can see. Right. And how much of that is like deleted Nick Cage films and... and... Thing, I don't know if they'd be things, on the internet. Things, things they're that, probably on film reels in like some shed. What about like things that Hollywood don't want us to know, or things that Hollywood yeah. don't want us yeah. to know? Like yeah. how many more Fast and Furious movies there's going to be? Yeah, you know. Like I'm talking about like the things, the things the big companies don't want us to know. Do they keep them in the deep web? Well, the examples on here, things that are on the deep web include medical records, legal documents, competitor websites. Oh, fuck knows what that means. <laughs> Government resources, I'm sure. <laughs> uh, organi- Organisation-specific repositories. Right. I mean, this is just a, a this is an image that I found on Google. Let's, let's, <laughs> let's reel it back to my original question. Yeah, Who's going to be on the Dark Council of the Internet? <laughs> well, the Dark Council or the okay, the, the Shadow Council of the, the, council of the, the Internet. The Shadow Council. Which I'm going to have a regular council that stands at the front. Everyone sees them. Yeah, they're just the pu- they're just the puppets. They're but the who's puppets. The- so, so that what. should be the obvious people. I'll tell you what. Go Every on. week we pick one for each. Yeah, okay. So who goes on the reg- how many though? <laughs> I don't know. Fifteen seats on each. Fifteen <laughs> yeah. seats. That'll keep us going for a while. Yeah. That's content. Okay, wait, no. How many seats were there at that table in the Illuminati meeting in the first Tomb Raider movie? What? How- <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean though? I you know the bit where he like throws that knife and it hits the eye of the Illuminati. I think triangle I saw that perfectly. film once and I didn't take a minute of it. Is in. that the first one where she breaks the clock? I don't know. Now she we're... smashes a clock. She has to make oh shit. She has to make that um like the triangle. Right, That's not okay. the one with Daniel Craig in, is it? I think yeah, we've it entered, is. I think we've entered an alternate <laughs> direct dimension where you're where I know more about films than you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's on Netflix, Ed. You should watch it. You talking about the new one? <laughs> no, I'm talking about the original one with Angelina Jolie. Oh, right. Because I saw the new one on Netflix, and Daniel Craig was nowhere near that. No, he wasn't. <laughs> that one's all right, though. No, it wasn't. No, I, don't I, think I went was. to see it at the cinema. Oh, fair enough. <laughs> um, um, anyway, yeah. So, who's so, on each, so are we saying that Lara Croft is on the one of the tables? 
No. Okay, so here's my idea, right? right. Do we well I've got two ideas. Okay, so go on we then. can choose between these two ideas. Okay. You have like a a, a Knights of the Round Table scenario, right? Sure. So like a, a governing body of the internet, which yeah. is I don't know, how many do you say? Fifteen? Yeah. That seems like too many. I'd okay, say eight, say 12. maybe. Okay. Let's meet in the middle, twelve. Between eight and twelve. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Between eight and twelve people that are like do they <clears throat> does each one of them represent a specific area of the internet? Yeah, we can pick that as well. Okay, we can pick that too. So Minister of Education would be <laughs> the Minister of Education. <laughs> I don't know. Who's um Who's that like who's that fucking is it Alex Jones? Who's that mad guy that's like a mad conspiracy theorist? Is oh it, yeah. yeah. Uh, the one from InfoWars. Yeah, Alex the, Jones. Alex Jones has got to be on there somewhere. The one that the other day I joked saying after we do our conspiracy theory episode, we're gonna end up a year from now being the new InfoWars. Being Info like Wars. Alex Jones, yeah. Ranting. Yeah, the guy from InfoWars, Alex Jones. He should definitely be on the Council of the Internet. No, that'd be the Dark Council, man. There's no way really? he should be on like who would want him on the front. Oh yeah, I didn't explain my second idea. My second idea oh, was God, that there's <laughs> so complicated. My second idea was that there's two councils, one for the surface web and one for the dark web. Yeah. That's what. Which I you think we should do that? Yeah. Okay, so we need sixteen internet personalities. Okay. Yeah. Well, ha- hang on then. So if you... Alex Jones is on the dark web council, mm-hmm. my counter to you would be that his surface web equivalent. We're, we're going like off. Kingdom Hearts style scenario here. Yeah. There's an evil version of everyone and a good version of everyone. His his good surface web counterpart would be Joe Rogan. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I'm up for that. Yeah. Yeah. Or Gandalf. Or Gandalf. <laughs> Joe Rogan dressed as Gandalf. <laughs> <laughs> or Gab- Ian McKellen dressed as Joe Rogan. Yeah, I like that one. <laughs> Which one? <laughs> Ian McKellen dressed as Joe, Joe Rogan. Rogan. A bald Joe- Ian McKellen, like really jacked up, like smoking loads of weed. <laughs> okay, cool. You heard, that's it. We've decided. The first two members of the Council of the Internet, I'm going to write it down. Okay. I'm call it exactly that. Is um, this like is... going to become canon? You reckon? <laughs> yeah, I think so. Yeah. And once we've, what are we going to do once we've filled the seats <laughs> we'll make a really crap photoshop image yeah. we'll cross that bridge we and then we'll it. put it on reddit going this is the official list all the best ideas are never actually fully formed until you finish them <laughs> there you go that's a good bit of wisdom for you there <laughs> <laughs> when did you get that did you make that up <laughs> yeah on the spot <laughs> on the spot alex jones and ian mckellen dressed as joe rogan <laughs> what is he doing a joe rogan cosplay <laughs> yeah He's at Comic Con. Cosplaying doing... as Joe Rogan. He's at yeah, okay. San Diego Comic Con doing Joe yeah. Rogan. <laughs> yeah, all right, cool. Um, wicked. What was that weird quote you just came out with? <laughs> all the best ideas aren't fully formed until you finish them. Can we put that one as shitty inspirational JPEG photos for the yeah. webpage? Yeah, definitely. We'll put that on the Facebook page, please. Like on a, with a picture of a beach in the background. Yeah. Okay, I'll make it later. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's the shittest thing I've ever said, I think. Um, it is, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, well, shall I... Um, you shall just I, kick off some stories. Yeah, shall I kick off with one? I've got a yeah. nice light-hearted one to um, start us off with. Um, from our good friends at the Huffington Post. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> um, Michigan University professors have been asked to fight off potential school shooters with hockey pucks? Question <laughs> mark. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, so the Oakland University police chief says that a classroom full of puck throwing students would be quite the distraction in quotation marks to a school shooter. Yeah. So America Well, I mean it, yeah, I wouldn't disagree, It'd be quite distracting. Yeah. I mean, it would be more distracting being shot by a school shooter. <laughs> America clearly having problems with with school shooters historically. Um but this is a genuine thing is that the Oakland University in Auburn Hills, Michigan. Um, all the faculty are being trained on how to throw hockey pucks. How? <laughs> oh, yeah, I know, right? right? This is like, why not ninja stars or like bricks? <laughs> why, why hockey Yeah, pucks? there's an obvious. You could get serious and start saying some like actual like practical things that the US could probably do. Yeah, but, um, we, don't, we well, shouldn't touch it, that. I though. guess I guess it would be man like, guns. So there you yeah. go. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's our, there you go. That's our political yeah. two cents prone. Um, I think it would be distractive if a gunman came in and saw a bunch of students like wearing Jason hockey masks. No, no, there's lunging. no mention of hockey masks. Like, it's just hockey. That would be cooler. So much cooler. If a school shooter goes into a classroom, why am I miming having a gun? 
If a school shooter goes into a classroom and sees a classroom full of like university aged students wearing like full hockey goalie outfits, yeah. <laughs> you'd be like, oh, I'm about to be like murdered by the Mighty Ducks. Uh, <laughs> like, I don't even know. Um, but it says here that this is the police chief for Detroit, right? Which I can't believe this. Anything that you can throw that's heavy and will cause damage or cause injury is the bottom line of what you're trying to do. Right, so he's basically saying. I think I might have read that quote slightly wrong, but it's basically that they're going to give faculty, literally, not making this up, a hockey puck each to throw at a school shooter. But it's in, something in the event of this actually happening, right? Which hopefully we never will. Right? Yeah, obviously. Like, are you saying that everyone's got to walk around at all times with hockey pucks? Because my happens- understanding of this is it's it's faculty, but they will also be like handed out to students as well. I d- okay, just all the time. What happens if I forget my hockey puck? Am I then dead? Are you? Does it become you- some weird token scenario where you only get shot if you don't have a hockey puck? Yeah, like I don't if you understand. Come, if you come to work at the school as a teacher and you haven't got your hockey puck, you're sent home to get it. <laughs> yeah, like <laughs> or you have to walk around in your pants, like yeah. if you've forgotten your PE kit. That is. No, it's weird, isn't nutty. it? Nutty. I mean, there that could a... be any, anything. Well, they could all be taught how to use like tasers, or they could all use taught to be used <laughs> how to use like nerf guns. Yeah, but there's some really like it kind of gets a bit more wacky if you can believe right. it as it goes on. Um, there's a guy who works at the university called Professor J. Gilbert. Um, yeah. It says, "I was initially skeptical about the puck plan, which is the name of this thing, right? Puck plan." <laughs> My first reaction was, you were talking about facing an assault weapon and asking us to fight back with hockey pucks. He goes, but then I went through the training session and it all made sense. What? None of us want to face an armed assailant, but students will look to us for leadership in a situation like that. Look, here comes Mr. Thompson from Science. He's got yeah. two hockey pucks and he's going to laz them at that guy with the M16. Yeah. He'll take care of it. Or just 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 shoot the hockey puck out of the sky, well, out of the sky, out <laughs> of the got, air when it's coming. Are they going to like learn how to? Is they going? Is it going to be like like um, somebody who's super skilled at throwing hockey pucks? And it'll be like the film Wanted. He'll learn how to curve, <laughs> curve pucks. around like the classroom. <laughs> I mean, corridor corners. Yeah. Um, Whoa, he's the, the one. <laughs> he's like Jet Li's the one. <laughs> There's a source here from uh, WD4 TV, which is like a local news channel, I would assume. Um, that this university has put in an order with a local sports store for 2,500 hockey bucks. <laughs> How big is this school? Well, it's, it's, a, it's a university, so but faculty s- and students. Okay. There's probably 500 of that number. It's probably staff. Yeah. Janitor. Well, I don't know, that was a complete like, assumption, but, you know. Yeah, so janitors, cooks. And they're also then selling them on to students as well, so you can have more than one. Um, Signed. Whoa. And yeah, you've got, but like, collecting them like pogs. <laughs> different like I've weights got, I've this got one's a, a, this got a, one's a stun Samson. this yeah. one's a stun puck and this one's a kill puck <laughs> yeah yeah you'd um, be like rock paper scissors I've got a warp puck it'll beat your fire puck yeah but then it's it, 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 if this is the last bit of this article is that um, there's a school in Pennsylvania called, well there's a part of Pennsylvania called the Blue Mountain School District so there's a load of different schools that make up this district of schools right um they were inspired by this and equipped all of its classroom with a five-gallon bucket of rocks. <laughs> so in each classroom, there's a huge bucket full of rocks. Right. <clears throat> right. To, to... So it says, anyone attempting a school shooting, the superintendent said, will be stoned, in quotation marks. We thought, I mean... about, we thought about equipping our students with bulletproof backpacks, but our budget wouldn't allow. So they've got buckets of rocks instead. <laughs> God um, damn. Like, it's, it's as if, like, I know this is a really, like, touched upon subject, but, like, how do you stop school shootings? Not with buckets of rocks, with gun control. Like, that's it. I'm assuming you feel the same way about yeah, gun absolutely. control in America, I, right? Like, I think, like, this is like a little old lady who swallowed the fly situation, like, but... Instead of like I animals, I don't get that reference at all. What's that? The, the rhyme: a little old lady swallowed a fly, then she swallows a spider to catch the fly. Oh, yeah. yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, it's yeah. Good, but instead of it being like a bigger problem, trying to, f- to beat to beat another one, yeah, it's just bizarreness. All well, the because like, so I originally like, they, remember hearing somewhere that 
they were thinking about literally arming teachers with guns, like encouraging teachers <clears throat> to bring guns into school. Like yeah. that's just insane. Because then my initial thought who is like, who polices the police? Yeah, who teaches the teachers about guns? Yeah. <laughs> um, because then it's like, imagine if you just have some like little asshole kid who gets under a teacher's skin. They just shoot the kid because they're annoyed with him. But or they manage to get a gun off a teacher. Yeah, that's because that's definitely going to happen, isn't it? Yeah. Like some like liberal arts teacher will come in like stoned out of his mind and just like <laughs> yeah. leave his gun on the desk <laughs> and when then he the goes kid who wants to do something bad will have a gun there to do it with. Oh, I yeah. don't know. I just whatever. Let's not let's not go down that. Well, yeah, we won't, we won't dwell on it too much. But still, like <laughs> it's it's crazy. America is crazy. Um, <laughs> broad <laughs> statement. Yeah. Well, do you disagree though? And there are aspects of it that I think are, <laughs> are, are confusing. All of it. Definitely. But what are your top three favorite things to come from America? My favorite things to come from America? Yeah. Domino's Pizza. Is that American? Yeah, why not? Okay. Mine, <laughs> one of mine's peanut butter and jelly. Okay. Um, oh, shit, man. You put me right on the spot here. <laughs> top three favorite American things? I don't know. Hollywood. Holly weird, more like. I yeah. don't, like um, <laughs> uh, all of your favourite norm stars that come from norm, Hollywood. All the norm stars that are there. Jet Li's the one that was made in America. Probably. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was probably more likely filmed in Bulgaria, but um, yeah, like somewhere that. like that. <laughs> um, three, I've got to pick another one. Oh, mate, what are you doing to me? You just put me on a spot here of a complete random thing I've got to come up John with. John Wayne, peanut butter and jelly, and. <laughs> I don't know the third one. What's a good thing? Baseball. It's American. Baseball. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. A Dr. Baseball. Cooler from the, from the freezer. Yeah. A Dr. Cooler. A Dr. Cooler, sorry. A Dr. Pepper from the cooler. Yeah. Oh, dear. Um, I'll probably edit that bit out. Any, <laughs> any, anyway. Yeah, what, what the hell, man? Yeah, I just put me on the spot to make a listicle. Yeah. <laughs> 15 things from America at number 10 will blow your mind. Yeah, number 10 is not even American. <gasps> anyway, so do you, you start, you hit me back with one. Yeah, or I will. you start us off. Right, Go so Matt, you invented, you <laughs> took your room last week, you've rearranged it since last yeah. time, so I'm a little annoyed because <laughs> we, we picked several corners. And oh, now the corners are still, I haven't, like, <laughs> I haven't knocked the walls down. <laughs> yeah, like... but the corners, they were all arranged and now it's been moved around. One of them is a mattress corner. Just two mattresses. <laughs> <there. laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm bringing back Animal Corner. <laughs> so I'm bringing it back. I'm bringing it back from the last episode. Yeah, you're continuing Animal yeah, Corner. Yeah, continuing it. Um, sharks love jazz, but are stumped by classical music. Okay. Says scientists. Yeah. Have you heard about this? No, I haven't heard about this. Yeah. No. Um, so this was from like February last year or something. Like okay. No, sorry, May. Yeah. And it was from Sydney uh, University. There, um, they basically played music at sharks. And, and, okay. and somehow worked out that they liked jazz. So looking well, like at, in the wild, or I think it was like probably an aquarium and stuff. I mean, how would you like? Are you, I think for a controlled environment, I don't know how you'd be able to j jump in the ocean and go and just play music. <laughs> jump in at the shark. ocean with a boombox on your <laughs> yeah. shoulder. You have to get but one of those somehow what, works those waterproof ones. There's like Yui oh, Bluetooth. The, yeah, the Yui uh, Boom uh, things. Yeah, they're like waterproof yeah. ones. Get yeah. one of them and go in there. <laughs> And chase after a shark. I don't think you can use them underwater. I don't <laughs> think that's what they're come for. Here, come here and listen to this. <laughs> and then what? what Check what? this shit out. Like the and shark then they play like jazz out. to one shark, and then yeah. they play hip hop to another. How would you like get any reference? Oh, it turns out all sharks don't like hip hop. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? That's pretty mad. What does it say? Why? <laughs> um, <laughs> why did they do this? So it was in a paper can. published in uh, Animal Recognition. The researchers okay. um, trained uh, uh, juvenile. Port Jackson sharks to swim over to where jazz was playing to receive food. It was thought that sharks have learned to associate the sound of a boat engine with food because food is shown thrown from tourists. Blah. Yeah. So sharks have learned from boat engine noises that, oh, food's going to be there. Well, so they don't necessarily <clears throat> like jazz more. They've just been trained to like I think jazz more. So far, it sounds like this Pavlovian thing where it's like, yeah. you know, like training where. Listen to jazz, get food. Yeah. Listen to hip hop, get. But you know, <laughs> get drive by. <laughs> drive by. Yeah. I don't know how that works in the ocean, but uh, with a submarine, Ed. <laughs> what, a shark? Yeah. A shark. <laughs> a shark is swimming along and sees a submarine being driven by a shark. Another shark. Yeah. What? It's a submarine that's full of water with another yeah. shark in it. That's what I'm thinking. But it's got the top down. 
<laughs> it's a convertible submarine. Oh my god, what? <laughs> What's happening? <laughs> so, it would yeah. be a bit like the um the James Bond car that goes underwater. That would be exactly. But like with that. a shark driving. <laughs> <laughs> What? How it's not my fault. I'm so intensely funny. Like, how am I supposed to do about that? <laughs> um, so, yeah, the test was made more complex with the addition of classical music. This confused the sharks who couldn't differenti- differentiate between jazz and classical. It was obvious. So they said, <laughs> uncultured sharks. <laughs> it was obvious that sharks knew that they had to do something when the classical music was playing, yeah. but they couldn't figure out what they had to, where they had to go. Uh, they had to go to a different location. Okay. Uh, the task is harder than it sounds because the shark had to learn a different locate had to learn that different locations were associated with particular genres of music music. Uh, right. which was then paired with a different food reward. Perhaps with more training they could have learned how to figure it out. I, huh? I don't what so you're saying there was two locations, one's playing classical, one's playing jazz. Yeah. But they had what it sounds to me like they had first of all trained one air one they trained sharks to learn that Jazz being played underwater means they'll get food. They'll get food. Yeah. So then they thought, okay, let's try let's try adding a second genre. Yeah. So we'll play classical over here, and the sharks didn't dig it. Well, yeah, well, because course, they... because yeah. What am I being thick here? Like, no, I don't think you are. I think it's just like it's it's hard for it's hard for me to quantify because I'm like obviously I think I'm more intelligent than a shark. <laughs> sure. <laughs> um, but if a shark, if you've trained an animal, right, the same thing would go for, like, a dog when you're training a dog. If you teach it that, like, when you make a clicking noise, like when they train dogs, right, when you make a clicking noise, that means you've done something well. Yeah. And when you, you know, don't make the clicking noise after they've done something, it means they haven't done it right. Like, And then you make a different noise, like a third noise. Yeah. It's like they haven't been trained to recognise that music. Well, that's what it sounds like to me. Because I mean, jazz of- music, like... it. They're just sounds to an animal, right? I mean, like, I don't know, maybe sharks can understand music, but, like, jazz music sounds different to classical music as a sound, yeah. not as music. Well, so maybe... When I, this is what makes... This is one of the quotes from the research, which makes it sound like that perhaps this is more students doing this than the actual, okay. like, people who have degrees in animal behaviour. <laughs> sure. Because... <Okay. laughs> this was, sounds like it. <laughs> um, this person says, sharks are generally underestimated when it comes to learning ab- uh, learning abilities. Most people see them as mindless, instinctive animals. However, they have really big brains and are obviously much smarter <laughs> than we give them credit for. Really big brains, apparently. Well, because, they, because they don't like classical music, therefore they're smart. Well, no, I think they're talking about like they learn a lot. But the fact that they use the phrase "really big brains" makes me think she ran out of words there when talking. But what, <laughs> what you? Here's what I would have thought you'd do, right? You'd have you train sharks to recognise classical music as food and jazz music as food, and play them both and see which one they swim to. But, but not, then would it just not, swim to the one that's closest? But this is horseshit because you know this isn't saying that je- the sharks like, which is what it's suggesting here, yeah. like one type. When of you music. first said it, I thought it was like they just played a bunch of jazz to sharks that never heard it before. Yeah, and, they, and the jazz, and the jazz <laughs> sharks loved it. Yeah, <laughs> that's not what I meant to say. The yeah, sharks the loved the jazz. Formed, they formed a band and went touring around New Orleans. Yeah, the sharks. Yeah, <laughs> it writes itself, doesn't it? Really, when you think about it. Um, no, all it is is they are, like I said, through Pavlovian like learning. Yeah, they're rewarding animals with with uh, with treats. Yeah, but then that's you basically that, skewed your own research there. Sh- yeah, I think all, all they've done is they've just proven that animals will associate a sound with a reward. But that's true of most species. Like my cat, if I rustle the bag with biscuits in it, he comes come to you. Yeah. <laughs> It's the same thing. Yeah, but then what's the? You can't then say you you your cat comes to you when you rustle a bag of cat treats, right? Yeah. If you then rustle a bag of like Doritos, your cat's still going to come to you. But what they're saying is like, we trained sharks to respond to jazz music, yeah, and then they didn't like classical music, yeah, because you haven't trained them to like it. Yeah, the music means fuck all to no, sharks. No, it's just a sound associated. It's just sound. Oh, you I... could have played. The sound of a baby crying and then giving them food when they heard it. And yeah, that then weird. the sound of like been... a shark that would have been, that would have been really dangerous. The piano. <laughs> that would have been really dangerous. Oh yeah. To train actually. sharks <laughs> to, a... <laughs> to come to a crying baby. That's... Man, that would have backfired badly. Yeah, I didn't think about that actually. 
Christ, that would have been real bad. Don't put me in charge of sharks. <laughs> this is all I'm saying. Yeah, I'm going to play this sound of a screaming human um, underwater and just see if I can associate it with treats. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Respond <laughs> every time a shark. Shark. Ugh, well, that's really hard to say. Every time a shark sees a human. Yeah. It should expect food. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, yum, and yum. then a year from now, we'll see Matt Parrish trains army of sharks to attack humans. <laughs> army of land sharks. Yeah. He gives them like, like water backpacks. Oh, okay. So get no, on land. no, not water backpacks, Ed. Giant, well, not giant, but tanks that are full of water that have got engines and wheels on. And <laughs> when the shark swims towards the front of the, ta- of the tank of water, it moves it forward. <laughs> And when it swims down, it fires a machine gun that's on the front of the tank. When, and shark what, tank. Is this another piece of the air arsenal along yeah. with the like convertible um, submarine? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm building. You don't understand. You don't understand. Is this it. going to be like um, when like the US government like they don't really financially support areas with people of color in them, and there's this conspiracy like they just want. People of colour to kill Turns each other out, off they don't, gang warfare. Yeah, they don't actually financially support areas that have large amounts of sharks in. Yeah, because they're scared. Or the they're going to be, they're gonna be like supplying them with submarines and machine guns. <laughs> we want sharks to kill each other off. <laughs> yeah, oh fund certain sharks, but not others. <laughs> right, sure. Yeah, don't fund hammerhead sharks, but do fund basking sharks. What about great whites? Great whites are weapons already, Ed. They've been weaponized. <laughs> Great whites are well out of it. Yeah, yeah, they're like, yeah, they're already weapons of the sea, so it doesn't really matter. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, um, that got a bit out of hand. That conversation <laughs> there. <laughs> okay, um, what the hell was that convertible <laughs> submarine bit? About? I don't really know. Um, I've got a pretty, a pretty good. Um, weird conspiracy theory thing that right. I found on here because you showed me a video of some odd conspiracy theories yeah. or like just conspiracies in mm-hmm. general rather than theories. So I found this thing called the time cube, <laughs> right? <laughs> um, it was originally its own web page that tried to explain, self-explain this theory, right? But the guy who came up with this theory was the self-proclaimed wisest man on earth. Um, his name was Otis Eugene Ray, and his website was called The Time Cube, but it's where he basically posted all this crazy stuff, right, mm-hmm. that, that he thought. Um, now, it, it's summarised as, um, Earth has four-corner, simultaneous, four-day time cubes, right? So a day is 24 hours still in this theory, but it 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 happens four times, and they're all happening at the same time. Um, there's a picture which we'll post on the Facebook page later on, um, but it basically basically says that like I can't explain this well enough. It's so complicated. This is going to be so shit. Why did you pick this? Because um, <laughs> at the time I was reading about it, it was really good. But now I'm reading about it now. It's like it's really good when you're sat reading about it. When you have to talk about it, it's just like the most fucking complicated thing ever. Um, oh man, this is the best read ever. I'm gonna it talk really about it on is. the podcast. <laughs> yeah, well, that's what I thought. But um, oh, let me re- <laughs> fuck's sake, this has just completely ruined my flow of like what I was thinking about now. Um, okay, I'll just explain it. I'll start again. You don't need to start again. Keep going. <laughs> right, okay, but basically, there was this guy had a concept called the time cube. It basically states that all. <laughs> Modern physics is wrong, okay? <laughs> Keep it together. <laughs> I'm, trying. I'm trying to hide my face. I'm and argues to... that, among many, many other things, Greenwich time is a global conspiracy, okay? Right, so the why? concept of Greenwich okay. time is a global conspiracy. He made tons of graphs, tons of pictures, and all this kind of stuff. He basically said that each day is four separate days, and these days are sun up, midday, sundown, and midnight, right? So he used to call it morning, early afternoon, late afternoon, right. and evening. These four things are happening at the same time. So it's grasping on the fact that, like, you know, it's nighttime here, or it's evening here, but it's morning somewhere else. Right. So these four, anywhere on Earth is only in one of those four. That's a real thing. Yeah, Anywhere yeah, on yeah. Earth is only either in morning, afternoon, evening, or night, right? Yeah, yeah, four yeah. stages. Yeah. But these things are all happening at the same time, so it's four days happening at the same time. 
right? Weird, but I can kind of wrap my head around that. Basically, there's a direct quote from the website, which thank fuck I've been able to find on here because I can't believe that website's been fucking taken down since like two days ago. Um, when the sun shines upon Earth, two major time points are created on opposite sides of the Earth, right? So midday and midnight. Yeah. So when the sun's shining on one side of the Earth, it's not shining on the other. Yeah. Wherever two major time forces join, synergy creates two new major time points we recognise as sun up and sun down. Sun down, sorry. Yeah, I kind of, obviously, yeah. You kind of get what I mean, right? <clears throat> yeah. Dawn and dusk, so either four, end of the equator. Yeah. Or whatever, there's you know four I mean. equidistant time points can be considered as time square imprinted upon the circle of Earth. Okay. Well, right. Okay, I'm starting to lose it. Yeah, yeah. I know. A single rotation of Earth's sphere, or sorry, in a single rotation of Earth's sphere, yeah. each time corner point rotates through the other three corner time points, thus <laughs> creating 16 corners, 96 hours, and four simultaneous 24 hour days within a single rotation of Earth. Right. So, what it's building on what I said that. Because these four different bits of time are happening on Earth at the same time, he argues that within one rotation you actually get four days. Because mm. he's arguing that time not ne- doesn't necessarily need to be split up into it's been twenty four hours. That's one day. Right. It's it's the, it's a different way of looking at how a day is measured. Right. So it, it <laughs> I kind of almost get it, but at the same time, I feel like this is someone who. A bit like myself, I'm not fantastic at mathematics. Yeah, me and neither. sometimes I can go around the longest way to get the simplest answer in mathematics. Yeah, right? because I completely overthink it. Oh yeah, that's exactly what I do. And as this well. is what this dude's doing. Yeah, I mean, in a, in a sense, I think. Yeah. So, so what you what have benefit is, that, is this of this new way of looking at a day? Well, I don't think he's necessarily saying there's a benefit for it. I think <laughs> he's just saying that this is this is his theory on how time should be measured, how one day should be measured. There's four days are happening at the same time. Right. Because they're kind of like one day... I, I, I get it, but it's, it's bullshit, but I yeah. get it, right? Um, it does invalidate it slightly that he went to see a psychiatrist and she diagnosed him with extreme schizophrenia. Yeah. But it's... It, it's really weird to try and like rationally <clears throat> analyse this because a day is just 24 hours. And hours have been determined I, I by rotations it, um, of planets around the sun. Like, that's a thing. I can almost imagine what he's trying to say. But for me, it's completely impractical. It, it's not. Un, it's completely unnecessary. Oh, yeah. There's no <laughs> reason for it. So I'm all. like, okay, cool. I want to go back to the bit where he says that the Greenwich Mean Time is a conspiracy. What the hell is that about? Well, there, there is that is, the British Empire trying to take no over? There's no more about it. That Greenwich, Greenwich time is... Well, you understand the concept yeah, of Greenwich yeah, yeah. time, right? Like, right. as in, there are... Greenwich time is the time zones that are split in, in vertical lines across a flattened yeah. map of yeah. the Earth, right? They're the... So Greenwich time is the concept of time zones, and time zones are... I mean, I can't remember how many of them there are, but there are, like, X amount of time zones because... The sun can only be shining on certain parts of the Earth at yeah, one time, and right? Greenwich mean time is usually considered zero hour. Yeah, and then exactly, everything's and then plus it's or like, minus. Whilst it's zero hour on that point, it's plus six hours in another point because that's how we make all the different like countries be able to actually have differences. <laughs> that, right? Like, that's how we allow New Zealand to have a morning. Otherwise, if we didn't yeah. allow it, <laughs> they Greenwich... would just, what, always be night time. Greenwich mean time is a really complicated thing like it genuinely is really complicated but like he's he's basically saying that rather than have these x amount of time zones that there are i don't know how many there are rather than have them he's saying there should only be four right so he's kind of trying to simplify that by making it way more complicated um that makes great listening i'll have to edit that very heavily (laughs) um (laughs) just like i don't i don't see the point myself yeah like i i Okay, <laughs> let's let's leave that there because that like, whoa, yeah, it's a bit of a mind blowing thing, isn't it? Like a little bit, it, but it's, well, it's very sort of like very it's, sort it's, of. It's, it's very strange. Part of me is like I almost understand what he's trying to say. Another part of him is like he's I like I said I think he's completely overanalyzed. But do you and, think that? 
do you think that, like so the concept of a day being 24 hours and the concept of a week being seven days and the concept of a year being 365 days right like that is pretty arbitrary right like there's no someone just looked at how long it takes our planet to rotate around it's arbitrary. the sun it's just the it's the mathematics behind making divisions of what a day is, what a, a week is, what a month is, or what a year is, and then breaking that down into like sizable chunks. Yeah, but at some mean? point like, that's someone just... sat and invented that based no on... No one invented a day. The Earth goes around in a certain amount. Yeah, but someone invented how we measure how long that day is. Yeah. How, yeah. Like, why... You could you could essentially argue that, like, if you were if you were the person to first, like, invent calendars right <laughs> Matt, Matt, i'm gonna start what? warning you now man. you're starting to ramble a little bit you're <laughs> starting I... to go down that rabbit hole <laughs> no but listen bear like with the me. government right they're telling me <laughs> the bear with me right if you were the first person to come up with the concept of a calendar based on planetary rotation right <laughs> I've why can't, calendar, you, right? Why can't you just sit there and say okay well a day is 48 hours so an hour I mean? would technically be 30 minutes yeah yeah cool but why not leave it as it is <laughs> like, but why could it not have been something else to start with? Oh God! But why not? Yeah, I, I agree. <laughs> why not? <laughs> okay, Matt, why not? <laughs> why not? Fair enough. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, cool. <laughs> Matt, well, I'm, I'm going to edit basically I'm all wor- of that out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really worried about you, dude. That's Thirteen minutes of me being <laughs> angry at time, <laughs> which in itself is ironic. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm worried. I'll come around to you next time, and you'll have not shaved or washed for a week. And I haven't like, shaved for weeks anyway. Like, oh my is. god, Ed! They're all out to get me. The government's trying to tell me it's night time when it's actually the morning. I can't. I can't grow facial hair, so you wouldn't be able to tell. Um, yeah, that's good, isn't it? Um, oh, I god. Before we go into your <laughs> the, the thing you want to talk about, um, sure. I used a phrase I was talking to you the other day. Um, the Internet of Things. Yes, and you weren't. You'd never heard that phrase before? No, I never heard of it. Uh, yeah, so it's it, it's like I was trying to offhandedly say to you at the time. It is a real thing. So the Internet of Things is is a term that's kind of come to describe any object we have that connects to the internet to form part of its function. Right, okay. So you could say um, smart light bulbs are a thing that's in the Internet of Things. Yeah. Smartphone, not necessarily, because it's kind of like defined by its connection to the internet. Yeah. But like... Smart devices are big ones, smart toasters, <laughs> smart kettles, yeah, yeah, yeah. that kind of thing, right? Um, the Internet of Things is what people kind of think is essentially like the, in quotation marks, fourth industrial revolution. So it's like okay. everything will be connected together and mm-hmm. um, we won't have to actually do much. It's going to become automated. Like you can control everything from your phone. It's kind of like yeah. the next major step in how things work, right? Um I genuinely was surprised that you hadn't heard that, that, phrase, hadn't that heard, phrase before. No, I hadn't heard that term before. Um, but um, the reason that I wanted to talk about it is because I read this interesting thing, um, and it's actually kind of slightly related to the um, to this, you know, the uh, cicada like mystery on the internet. You is this another conspiracy theory? It's not a conspiracy theory at all. No, no. Um, it's it's basically the concept that like people can really easily like hack into these devices that are connected to the internet and exploit them like massively mm. because the people making them never even like assumed that you would want to hack like someone's toaster to try and exploit their data right because if you have a smart toaster um, I don't even know if they exist I'm assuming they probably yeah, do probably. um that device <clears throat> is connected to your your network, your mm-hmm. network is connected to the greater network of the internet, and then it's really easy to just like get into that person's data and steal that stuff. Um, the thing that blew my mind is there are seventy five billion devices connected to the internet. Fucking that's whoa. mental. Yeah, that but is that can range from anything, right? Um, and there was a. So you're telling me if I had a smart toilet. And I'm sitting there one day and suddenly I hear modem noises coming from it. I should be alarmed because it's probably a hacker trying to get into my bank account. Yeah. Yeah, basically. But the thing the <laughs> thing that I the thing that, that that put me onto this is um there's this thing called the Owlet Wi Fi baby heart monitor. Right. Um so this is a device which has obviously the best of intentions. It's trying mm-hmm. to wirelessly monitor the heart rate of a baby. Um it's 
the fact that you can hackers can exploit this device can connect to this device wirelessly through any kind of opening in your network you have and they can control what it can hear they can set it to record um to to save the things it records to different locations all this kind of stuff right and there's examples of where people have um connected to these devices by using really dumb vulnerabilities in people's networks like these things these devices aren't password protected because mm-hmm. why would you want a password protect yeah. that um it's a light bulb yeah right or yeah. like a camera or a yeah. microphone or something right um and they recorded they changed the location that the audio files get recorded to in this thing um overheard some guy like read out his credit and bank details over the phone and stole all his fucking money <laughs> which i think is mad like i you know that's crazy that that is a thing but it, you go to think like all these cool things that you think oh that would be that would be kind of unnecessary but a cool thing to have yeah. like a smart kettle yeah. right like that smart kettle doesn't have a password to access no. it yeah so i don't know you're saying that like that much effort technically to kind of get a into that kind of thing. port into your network yeah it's it's a open like a massive vulnerability um and that's something that I'm genuinely just interested in anyway. Yeah, it's, it's, um, it's interesting. But it links to that um, <clears throat> Cicada thing because the anyone that, that doesn't know about it, Cicada 3301 is like a big, um, it, well, it was, it's about five, six years old now, but like this huge treasure hunt kind of thing, like kind of scavenger hunt that was posted on 4chan, like, like I said, like five or six years ago, encrypted messages, trying to recruit people into this like secret organization or whatever, right? Really complicated stuff. If you're interested in it, just Google it because it is fascinating, like genuinely fascinating. Um, but the whole the whole point of that is that the people that managed to get to the end of this scavenger hunt um, were like pretty much sworn to secrecy. But there's a lot of people that have um, supposedly leaked information about what the purpose of this thing was. And the purpose of it was to find really intelligent people to help develop software that can keep everyday people's stuff completely protected mm. so the idea was this challenge that yeah it's that, it's, that, that required you to decrypt all this stuff and work through all this stuff is to try and narrow it down there's no it's job it's basically it's never it's been 100 percent proven what it is or anything like <clears> that and there's been like one every year and then it then the, the current one that was four years ago or so like it still hasn't been solved mm. like four years old and it hasn't been solved like yeah. no one's been able to solve it because it's just so complicated but it just links to that whole privacy thing of like using privacy to exploit privacy. Yeah. And like you not expecting that your kettle could literally be the thing that like leads you to bankruptcy, bankruptcy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Having your identity stolen, all this kind of stuff. Um, not much comedy value to that, but it's no. just like uh, that I'm, kind I'm, of shit fascinates me. Yeah. Um, I've been and... trying to find a joke in there to throw out <laughs> whilst you're talking. Yeah. But, but yeah, but there's other stuff as well. Like people can, um, um, people can control like, um, your mind. Yeah, your mind, but also <laughs> there's um they have uh like Wi-Fi enabled like cardiac monitors, like pacemakers. Uh-huh. Like someone could theoretically hack your pacemaker and kill you with it. Like that's <laughs> mad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And scary. <laughs> yeah, and very, very terrifying. But yeah, that that's that kind of roughly links into the Internet of Things <laughs> thing um that I was explaining to you. Um yeah, I don't know what you think about all that kind of thing, but it's not necessarily well, funny. I just thought it would be an interesting thing no, to, it's, I mean, to say. It's, yeah, I mean, I, I I didn't really think of any of that stuff with a smart, like the sort of smart, smart home setup and all that sort of stuff about how it is a vulnerability. It's mm. definitely it's a little bit scary, really. The sort of, but it's, yeah, but then the internet can be if you, if you talk about it from a technophobic point of view, it always can be. Yeah, it's um, really easy to exploit how scared people are of the internet. Because, yeah, I mean, like, you read the Daily Mail or anything like that. Anything to do with technology is usually laced with a hint of this will be your downfall. Yeah, this, yeah, we're all going to get taken over by yeah. smart, like Hugh light bulbs. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just the thing. The thing that kind of really hammers it home to me is people don't realise that these devices are gateways into your like mm. home network. That's a real thing. Like you're, you've got a smart light bulb. Great, it's a light bulb. It's innocent, but it has an IP address. It has a MAC address. Yeah. You can exploit that. You can connect directly yeah. to someone's router through that. Like that's terrifying um yeah i don't know oh. if you want to lighten the mood with something that you've got slightly yeah i tell you tell you what saying about that surprised less me. less i know it's totally less funny than the normal thing we talk right. about but it's like not, yeah you know this is this is just us talking i was about trying to think of a joke internet, about so. hacking somebody's google glass 
um, <laughs> changing the colour of their eyes somehow. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, yeah. but that joke didn't like... Hacking someone's toaster and burning it every morning. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I burnt your ha- toast. Hacking someone's toaster so it prints their IP address onto the bread. Yeah, then when they throw it out, go through their bins and <laughs> yeah. find their IP address. I don't want to eat this toast. It's got numbers yeah, on it. Or hack their like smart light bulb so it flashes. It control brain controls them. And they say their password out loud. <laughs> <laughs> what being like brainwashed by um, what uh, like Morse code, like light based yeah. Morse code? That's yeah, that's probably not a thing. <laughs> yeah, go on. Anyway, so apparently, get this, Matt. Mm-hmm. Only two thirds. Of American millennials believe the Earth is round. Only two thirds. Two thirds of the world of America's oh, millennials. No. So this is this is a that's a slight that's a slight devious slightly devious headline. Okay. Because reading into it, what it actually means is right. They polled about eight thousand um, adults mm-hmm. um, at the beginning of the year in two thousand. No, sorry, in, in February two thousand eighteen. Yeah. Um, and actually, on my birthday, how weird. Um, and it, they in the. In there, they said that only sixty six percent of people said that they they know the Earth is round, right? Okay. The thirty three percent apparently there was some ambiguity; they weren't sure. Right. So they weren't saying like thirty three percent of people said the world was flat, but because there's been a lot of kind of I think what this comes from, because there's been a lot of kind of like a platform has been given to flat earthers and all this sort of stuff. Yeah. That it's caused some ambiguity in people who are like. Growing up, yeah. But why? Do you know what I mean? I don't know like, why that's become such a pub like why? Because f- over the last, I don't know. I want to say like year. You hear about flat Earth theorists way more than you ever have. It's not like it's a new thing that people no. have thought. Like it's an older idea of of what the Earth actually yeah, exactly. is. Like that's <clears throat> why are we giving these people a platform to. So that's what I think. That's what it's suggesting this here. Nonsense. So it's basically saying that thirty three percent of millennials in the US are there's some confusion there in that yeah. in that in that. Uh, they're percentage. like not sure yeah they're like i think i'm i think it's round yeah but i've heard that it, it might not be and it's like how nuts is that, that but you can't the, the dialogue that the, the narrative has been <laughs> has been polluted because think of <laughs> just think of this right for someone for um like a, a logical person like you or i right it's really hard for us to put ourselves in the shoes of someone who thinks the earth is flat because it's not no. <laughs> like, and it's not like that's not my opinion. It's fact that a planet yeah. is a sphere or yeah. a rough sphere. Like, how can you, with all the evidence that's given to you, i.e., like looking at other planets through telescopes, mm-hmm. the fact that you can drive in a straight line and not fall off the edge of the Earth? Like, how are you? How are you believing that the Earth? That is flat? I know <clears throat> now. I know that from looking into it a little bit a couple of years ago. Like, yeah. how do people? become so like how do you get so i don't know what's the word like wrapped confu- up in it yeah like, like how like how do you con- convince yourself of this well how do you and get it's... you have your mind changed from knowing that the earth is a planet therefore it is round like i i don't get how you can i don't get the evidence for it being flat i don't get how people are having their minds changed from one to the other yeah I mean, looking here, it says that uh, according to the final breakdown, eighty-four percent of America, eighty-four percent of Americans, yeah, mm-hmm. think the world is round. But that's but, it but, should be like ninety-nine percent. Like, yeah, that's nuts. And uh, blah blah blah. While a large majority believe, and it said, uh, while the large majority of the of them believe the world is round, young millennials aged eighteen to twenty-four are more likely to subscribe to the the, the believe the Earth is flat, and around about four percent. But why? Like, I, is it but, just because they're um, like, oh, so I read this on the internet. Someone told me about it while I was I playing Fortnite, it... and now I'm really confused. <laughs> like, yeah. someone dabbed... there's a Fortnite dance about the Earth being yeah. flat, so that's all I give a shit about. Yeah, now. someone no scoped me and did a dab on top of me whilst telling me the world was flat. So that's now just, I believe. I just them. can't wrap my head around people thinking that the Earth is flat. So I, I think this is a byproduct of the internet being this large source of information it's like the that, only platform for anything these days yeah but yeah. the problem is that it's not really um curated in any meaningful <laughs> yeah. way right? it's not, so it's anyone not, can post yeah, anything yeah. they want and it doesn't and have to be citated citated yeah. cite what's and because the word? i think it's also that thing of because it's slightly cited? intriguing because i've read about it a couple of times yeah i've even gone so far as to 
go on a website and look and like try and understand what they how they can believe this. Sure. Right. But someone who's maybe younger and is still I don't know, it's still, fucking hell, 18 to 24, right? You're still just learning about the world. Like, Not you, when you're 18 to 24. But, but, you know what I mean? Like, if you you're younger, be, a bit more, if maybe more naive is the word, right? should be mentally equipped to realise that planets are but If you're a millennial and all you've been brought up on is the internet, yeah. <laughs> right? If you're locked in a room by your parents and go, there's a computer, yeah. I'm not really going to raise you properly, this is your source of information and entertainment. Do you know well, what I mean? No, like, because the thing is, say you're, say you're 18 years old now. I wish. Like when you were a kid, so I mean, I don't know, when was I kind of probably the most like mentally like Retire. sculptable? <laughs> yeah. Um probably when I was like five or six, right? Yeah. Or or like a bit later than that. The kind maybe, of age maybe... I was when I thought wrestling was real. Okay. Like yeah, that's think, like when you get to about maybe between eight and ten you start you start becoming l- logical, right? Yeah. If you've had a typical, somewhat privileged upbringing, you'd be starting to develop some kind of like logical cognition about stuff your brain starts like working nine out or ten right this isn't real that is but if you're if you're 18 now you were let's say you were you were between five and eight in what would it be like 2008 2009 mm-hmm. yeah. like that is I, I i don't think that people would have had too much access to like public forums of like flat earth and stuff like 10 years ago like, yeah, I, I don't know. I think it's just. I, don't know. I think I. I personally, that's. What, I'm just saying my opinion really here at the moment. Oh no, but, sure. But... but I think I. Yeah, I mean, like I said, this is where. I, but it's because this is a way. Like I said, a really, really ancient theory. A lot of people. Well, they thought the Earth was flat before they realized it yeah, was round. Exactly right. And how is looking? This, how has this planets? become like a full circle? No pun intended. Like, Whoa. <laughs> how have people suddenly like look back and go, okay, back in the day when they first were able to look at other planets. That's how they realised Earth wasn't flat because they saw the other planets aren't flat. Mm -hmm. Or something like that. (laughs) They worked out something. Along those lines, They went up in a balloon and went, oh, shit. Yeah. So you're telling me that now we've got the most advanced technology we've ever had. We can look at other planets. Like, I could get a live webcam feed of a telescope looking at the moon Uh, right now in, like, 10 seconds. Well, you get live web feeds and it shows Earth. Yeah. Like so, I mean, but, all you gotta do is surely most people watch that thing where that guy like free fall jumped out of that like rocket that was in the Earth's atmosphere. Oh yeah, the one Red Bull thing. Yeah, yeah. That like you can see the curvature of the Earth in that. Yeah, but then I think the theorists, these red flat Earther guys, dudes, right? yeah. the flat Earther boys, flatties, they're called. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> flat boys. <laughs> the flatsters. <laughs> the flatsters. Um, I think they have all these Flat theories Stanley's. about how people, when they're in space, yeah. see the Earth as a sphere because it's to do with distortion in the eyeball of light. And they've got all these. Oh, you know you, that they love coming up with theories. They like come that, up with all they? of yeah. this cack about how people are incorrectly perceiving the Earth as being a sphere. It's like a um, it's like a coping mechanism, though, isn't it? It's like when well, you I talk think there's to... something either it's either mental illness. Or um, I don't know if it's uh, mental illness. No, no. I think I'm talking about a form of like. There's got to be some susceptibility there of believing horseshit at that level, right? Yeah. Well, it's kind of like you're trying to come up with a theory to almost like tr- trick yourself into thinking that this thing is true, right? So you know, like when you try and talk to, um, if you try and talk to, I don't mean to cause any kind of like separation amongst people listening that are religious, but like if you talk to someone who is very religious, mm-hmm. not just someone that like. Oh yeah, I'm a Christian. Like I believe in God. But mm-hmm. I don't. I yeah, don't go to church every day or whatever. I'm like a a really kind of devout religious person. They they come up with these own theories to almost try and convince themselves that the thing they believe in is true, right? Yeah. And it's the same thing. Like oh yeah, astronauts see the curvature of the Earth because the light reflecting off of this thing distorts their vision or whatever. No, it's because the Earth is round. Yeah. Like it's like they're trying to come up with things. To, to disprove your logical like counter to their argument. And that's a really like commonplace thing that happens when yeah. you try and, you know. The same thing, like when, when someone accuses you of doing something wrong, like human nature is to be defensive about it, right? Like it's Well, I mean, I I think part of it also might be people who are vocal flat earthers. Mm. You know, maybe if there's spokespeople who want attention. I don't even know if they believe their own Snake oil. I think. No, I think sometimes a lot of this stuff is like the people like um, Alex Jones who talk on Infowars about yeah. his right wing horseshit, right? <laughs> um, I don't believe he actually believes in what he says. I think he's he knows he's making him money, so he sticks to it. But do you not think that people like that 
eventually start to believe their own bullshit. Probably. And that's probably part of the flat earth thing. And then but that's what it's interesting called, you like, mentioned religion because they also say that when it comes to flat earthers, mm. um, 100% flat, of them are Christian. No, no, no. It says 52% of them are very religious. 23% of them are somewhat religious. When it comes to... Um, and then there's the percentages for not being religious at all, which are quite yeah. low for flat earthers. Yeah. But people who think that the world is a sphere or is you know round or whatever, is a planet... Um, then it's pretty even across the board. Mm. You know, like, I think there's slightly more people who are not religious at all, but everything else is pretty, the spread is pretty even. Yeah. So, yeah, so people who, a lot of people who are flat earthers, over 50% of them are religious. Yeah. So well, um, I'm, just gonna put, a... I'm just going to put this out there. Most, <laughs> not go. most of, all of, all of the world's, like, widely regarded, widely regarded? Leave a gap, so I can edit that out. All of the people on Earth that have been most widely regarded as, uh, you know, Earth's most logical, intelligent, well-respected, you know, experts in their field, none of them are religious. Yeah, I mean, I don't think I you have anything to be against... slightly illogical to believe in, devoutly believe in religion. I have no problem with people thinking that there's some kind of like higher power or something, yeah. but like. Being devoutly religious, there has to be a point where you're like fighting on your own bullshit because maybe I mean you know I kind of do. I guess it was a really deep thing to yeah. say, but like <laughs> it, 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 look at all the people like Neil deGrasse Tyson, um, Einstein, Stephen Hawking. These people that are widely regarded as the most logical thinkers of their time. Mm. None of them are religious. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, I, I don't think there's much more I can say about it. Really, I mean, yeah, because yeah. I, I, I pretty much agree. <laughs> Um, I... There's no punchline. No, there is no punchline. I'm trying to think of <laughs> this punchline. This is a really serious Let episode. Get... What's going so on? This is... Yeah, sorry, you've tuned into a comedy podcast. There's like 10% comedy in There's a comedy the podcast that's got really deep into like religion and gun <laughs> control. I thought, I thought it would give me some hilarious goofs about millennials not believing in, uh, believing in a flat world. It's because of Fortnite. <laughs> it's because of Fortnite's flat. Yeah, Fortnite, it, it comes on a flat disc, so therefore oh God, Earth yeah. is flat. Yeah. Um, yeah, they probably <laughs> Fortnite put Fortniteers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Fifty-two um, percent of Fortniteers are devout Christians. Yeah, fifty-two percent of Fortniteers believe the whole world is just that map of the world in Fortnite. Yeah, I am. Um, recently, when I was in town, I saw that you can buy. Um, <laughs> oh God! You can buy. Oh, what are those like Fortnite. figures with the big heads called? Oh. God, um, yeah, shit. How do I not know that? They were, were going to do a Gears of War game based on Junko, Punko, something? Um, Funko Pops. Funko Pops, yeah. Funko Pops. So you can buy Fortnite Funko Pops. Right. And when I saw them, a little bit of me died. <laughs> yeah, Fortnite is just, it's this generation's Pokemon, isn't it? Just like Minecraft was the previous thing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it'd be interesting to see what the next thing is. Uh, I think Fortnite will be around for a while before we, before it dies. Or it's not just necessarily got such dies. a wide appeal. I mean, I've, I'm played it like once draw a line right here and start talking about some dumb funny shit right. instead what have you got <laughs> right okay get this one okay. domino's yeah. regrets telling customers they'll get 100 years of pizza if they tattoo themselves <laughs> oh you've right? heard things like this before so in um, russia this is in russia okay domino's decided we're gonna do we're gonna do like a kind of pr stunt yeah yeah so they went on to twitter and said if you get a tattoo of the domino's logo on your body You'll get basic pizza for life. Anywhere on your body. Anywhere on your body. I would fucking do that. I would so, do that like now um, if you want me to. <laughs> so they said that the pro promotion was for the first, I think they said, like, uh, let's have a look. So Russian branch of the fast food company promised that it that those who got the tattoo would yeah. get 100, pe free, 100 free pizzas for the next <laughs> 100 say. years. <laughs> Yeah, you can't get it out. Speak. It's cause it, because it's like it's got the word 100 in there so many yeah. times. They would get 100 years of free 100 pizzas. One, one, they would get 100 free pizzas for the next 100 years. So that's one what? pizza a year. One pizza a year. That's shit. No, that's nowhere near that as good as I That first. can't be that good. I wouldn't do that. No, not for that. One pizza a year. Domino's isn't even that good. But, the, but it would appear that the brand were not expecting so many people to take part as they quickly had to change the promotion to the first 350 people within days of it going live. So they thought that no one would take them up on this, right? Because why would you do that? Why would you get your body scarred well, permanently? The thing is, right, I, if you said to me, I know it's not what the article says, if you said to me, um, 
Matt, if you get the Domino's logo tattooed anywhere on your body, you can have as much free Domino's as you want for the yeah. rest of your life. I've already got a lot of tattoos. I don't give a shit. Like I would, I've I would got do one that. tattoo. I'd get another. I'd just yeah, get on the like, inside of my thigh. Like who the fuck's going to see that? Except yeah, my or girlfriend. like on the, your foot, or like some. Who fucking cares? Like yeah. it doesn't matter. Between like, your toes. If you had no tattoos, yeah, dumb move. If you've already got loads of tattoos, less know. dumb I, move. I, I don't know. I, I could hide it in one of my other ones. So, th- so the thing is, there's another sentence here. I think this is really poorly fucking written. It's on the metro, right? Oh. I mean, this is a really fucking poorly written out article because it the makes no fucking the sense. Internet. Because there's another. <laughs> sense here that maybe further car- clarifies what they actually get here okay and with m- many rushes desperate for their chance to have one ten thousand free pizzas the quota was filled at rapid speed so what i think it means is 100 pizzas a year for 100, for 100 years. years i would do that yeah 100 pizzas a year. i, I wouldn't be able to the last I wouldn't, time i had domino's pizza though i wouldn't be able to eat 100 a year one, that's one two every three a week. one every three days basically oh wait no what we're talking about two a week it's like one every three days yeah yeah that's a lot that is a lot. I'd be maybe I'd, I wouldn't even be able to do one a week. I like pizza, but, but then you give them to your mates. You go, "We want my this. We want my Tuesday pizza because I can't handle it anymore. Yeah. I couldn't face another <laughs> one." So yeah, so loads of pizza for life. Loads of people got it, and it got to the point very quickly where Domino's had to backtrack and say it was going to be for anybody who got the tattoo. Yeah. Then they said it was three hundred fifty people first. Okay. And then they literally had to send out tweets saying, "Please, Please don't stop. cancel your tattoo appointments because yeah. we won't." Three hundred fifty people already. It was like done in days. But I mean. Some of the, I've just Googled this. Some of the logo tattoos that people got are actually like pretty subtle. Yeah, they're pretty cool, actually. Some of, one of them's got them on their ankle, back of their leg. One of them's got like, <laughs> it's like a very like Soviet Russian looking thing with a hand holding the Domino's logo and it says mm. prisoner to freebies on it. Yeah, see that kind of, that's not Or oh, there's bad. one with one of this Ninja Turtles biting the logo. Yeah, I've got that one on here, yeah. So um, last time when we did the show, we talked about the nutty um, ghost house with a basement. Oh with yeah, the glass with the, cabinet <laughs> with the like the movie or something. Yeah, that's yeah, right. <laughs> I don't remember my own thing. Did anybody come up to you and yeah. at work and go, yeah. "What was the ghost thing about?" Yeah, and what did, did you say? Actually, oh, I can't remember. I think yeah. is what I said to most yeah. people. Then I didn't watch it. Ed did. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. I've already seen Jet Li's the one. That's the only film I've seen <laughs> and can reference. Yeah. Um. So I found um after the last show, I decided to try and do some research for this this next episode. Mm-hmm. And I ended up like thinking, well, you know what's a pretty deep mine for nuttiness is ghost stories, creepy pasta, all that kind yeah, of shit. I love on. that kind of shit. Yeah. yeah, it's kind of enjoyable in a trash way. Yeah, I don't take any of it seriously. No. Um, and there was this guy, uh, a user um, channel on YouTube called Slapped Ham, who talks about a lot of it's a lot of listicles of other shit people have found. On sure. Reddit, yeah, for yeah. Chat, you know all these various resources, yeah. and he basically accumulates them into like five or ten items to do with that subject. Mm-hmm. So he's found he did this one called "Most Insane Conspiracy Theories You'll Ever Hear." We'll put a link to it on the page, yeah. along with everything else we yeah, talk yeah. about in this show. Um, and in there, there's a bunch of um, <laughs> a bunch of conspiracy theories. Some I've researched a little bit, some I haven't. <laughs> okay. Basically, I've only listened to what he said and I'm, taken the headline. I'm sold. Take me through okay. this. I'm going to so lean. The first I'm gonna one... move my mic and lean back so I can enjoy <laughs> okay. it. Yeah. So the first one is about this young girl who got murdered in, I believe, the 90s called uh, Jean Bennett Ramsey. Now, I don't know if you've ever heard of her. No. But she was a pageant queen, so she was a very young girl, um, and she got kidnapped and, and murdered pretty Brutally. It was all okay. very, very horrible. I won't really go into the details, but if you want to sure. look her up, you can do. But it was pretty horrific. She got murdered. And there's some questions there about who did it. The parents at some point were implicated, I think, and it all got a little bit, okay. you know. But there's a conspiracy theory on the internet that Katy Perry is her grown up. Oh, not this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, about this? Because, yeah, I have heard about this. Uh, in passing, I've heard about this. Go so on, tell me So a lot of that. people on the internet have basically taken very tenuous links between how this girl looked in her pageant photos versus how Kerry, Pe- Katy Perry looks now. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And said, that's definitely her. She was obviously kidnapped. She wasn't murdered for some reason. And This is like teenage and- pageant queen was kidnapped and turned into a pop star? Yeah. Uh, but I don't know who or by why or how. Um, and apparently something that flagged a lot of Reddit users, for, for example, was the fact that Katy Perry actually referenced the murder in her autobiography so that people were like, oh, my God, she 
pretty she, spooky. Oh my god, she actually referenced <laughs> it. Um, so apparently, yeah, a lot of people think that Katy Perry is actually this girl who was murdered, but actually wasn't. You do the math. That's. I mean, I don't understand a why. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the main thing. It's and, like, like, what is the what's, what's the end game? Why, like, why, why do you have to kidnap and fake the death of a young girl to? Like cultivate her into a pop star, what? Like, what's the reasoning behind that? I don't know. But also, what made when I looked into the actual girl who was murdered, mm-hmm. there's no fucking way that she was they not, not look murdered. the same at all. Well, no, no, no. I mean, oh, what I'm saying is, there's no like, fucking way she was, she was not like murdered. Or something. It was uh, brutal. I'm not yeah, going to go into fake it on murders, here. Though, can't you? Yeah, but I mean, no, sorry, but there's a lot of forensic evidence that's actually but right there's there. There's a to really similar you. thing I heard about many years ago. Have you heard the thing about Avril Lavigne? Oh, God, not this one. Is this the one where she's a clone or something? <laughs> yeah, she's, yeah, Avril Lavigne was murdered by the CIA and replaced with a clone. <laughs> <laughs> I like you looking at me with sincerity, <laughs> like, you believe this. Yeah, I do. <laughs> I'll, I'll, why? Link you, I'll, I'll link you to the, to the article okay, about Okay, first later. of all, here's my question to you. Why? <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know. I can't remember why. But there's a thing where there's... Did she sing a song that was a bit too controversial? <laughs> She sang a song where if you play it backwards, it re- <laughs> it it, <laughs> it reveals all of the current CIA operatives in the field. Yeah, in it's other like countries that. In the world. It's that weird little file in Mission Impossible One that everyone's after. Yeah, or Triple X Two, starring Ice Cube. Ice Cube. Ice Cube. Ice Cube. <laughs> Ice T Cube. I um, I think it might have even. Did you like loosely mention that story to me the other day? A Katy Perry one. Maybe. Because if you didn't, I've heard about that recently, but I didn't put two and two together until you no, got to No, I don't to think the... I did. Did you watch the video? Yes. <laughs> That's... <laughs> That's it. That's where I heard about it. Because I did it. link you it. But I was listening to it while I was at work, so you... I was like, I didn't... I didn't Idiot. Like, it didn't go in. <laughs> That's, is that also the one where they but say I linked that... you this video we're talking about, and now you're like, wait, I heard about this. <laughs> yeah, because I told, sent you the video, you I idiot. thought it was you that talked to me. I was like, it can't have been, because you wouldn't have talked to me about it if you then wanted to talk yeah, about it. why would you talk to me in, in an Australian accent, like the presenter <laughs> yeah. from the video? Says, that's the same video where he says that Australia doesn't exist. Yeah, this is where I'm getting to. Yeah. You've just killed the last <laughs> oh, no. conspiracy theory. Oh, no. So that's going to be the next one now. Yeah, so okay. the next one, again, going back to Flatsters, <laughs> yeah. they believe that Australia doesn't exist. This is a really dumb, crazy thing. So it starts I'm, apparently I'm from... fascinated by this. This starts from apparently... The, Australia was, as a lot of people know, originally a, a prison colony for the British Empire. Yeah. So hardcore criminals would be sent there to Australia and they would basically work there for the rest of their life until they died working and it was mm-hmm. for mining. And, yeah, yeah, but yeah. But yeah, it was basically a mining colony slash prison colony, right? Yeah. And if you went there, you wouldn't come back. That's it. Um, well, basically they're saying that was all a front. The British Empire would basically ship prisoners out to the sea and just chuck them overboard and kill them. Mm. And it was just all a front to cover the fact that Britain was killing hundreds, if not thousands of prisoners. Yeah. And that's apparently where it starts from. Thing, and because the British Empire is very ancient and old, yeah, and they're part just, of the Illuminati, <laughs> uh, Australia, ipso facto, Australia doesn't exist. <laughs> but the thing that the thing that I remember from this is, uh, and my favourite bit about it is like, um, there's a bit where it's either the guy presenting it or one of the things he's reading out. It's like what? So if you go to Australia now, what happens? Well, your flight just gets diverted in midair. <laughs> and you get taken to like another country where everyone pretends to be Australian. Yeah. And it's just like a big set. Yeah. So we work with a couple of Australians and I've yeah. I've, I've given them like the third degree about where are you from? No, yeah. really. Where are you really from? Yeah, where are you really from? <laughs> yeah. Like, no, come Cut on now. Cut the shit, guys. Where are yeah. you really Cut from? The ch- yeah. <laughs> Cut the bullshit. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> and um, yeah, so Australia doesn't exist and Flat Earthers firmly believe this. Why they mm, are... Doesn't that tell you something about flat earthers? They're nuts. 100% of people that believe this Australia conspiracy theory also believe the earth is flat. Yeah. Because they're idiots. <laughs> I think it's something to do with the way that they perceive the earth as a disc. Yeah. That you take the continents and you take earth and you flatten it out into a disc. Australia won't fit into that. Australia would be on the bottom so everyone would fall off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, no, it's because, yeah, well, that's the other thing, isn't it? Because if you say that Australia is down under... There yeah. is no down under. Down under? I, I've said that word too many times now. Now it doesn't <laughs> down sound under. Like, down under. Down under. Down under. <laughs> down under. Then, you know what happens if you... Because um, it can't be there, because there is no 
underneath. But you know what happens if you sail a ship off the edge of the earth, right? Yeah, you, you, don't, you, go, you, can't. To, you go into um, purgatory. Is that the true? Is that true? Is that yeah. another theory of theirs? So that's it, that's um, the plot of Pirates of the Caribbean at World's End. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is that the one where they like sail a, a ship through a desert? Yeah, and they have to like flip the ship upside down. Maybe that's Australia. I don't think I've seen the film. I don't it's seen... not very good. No, <laughs> like, surprise, no, I don't, surprise. I, um, cool. Oh, look, another yeah, movies, more movies. More, that I've more seen. movies. Okay, I've seen so Jet Li's one. Yeah, three Pirates of the Caribbean films, six of the uh, Fast and seven Furious. of the Fast and Furious movies. I haven't seen eight yet. Really? Yeah, really. I can't um, believe that. that. You're like the number one Fast fan. Yeah, I know. You're part of the family <laughs> yeah, that they talk I about. Am, yeah. We ride together, we die together. Are you going to be in the next film? Are you going to be like the hacker guy who hacks stuff for him? <laughs> Please. Yeah, I'm, I'm He's taking, can we start a campaign? I'm taking over Ludacris's role in those yeah. movies. As they're was like he the hacker bro? Whiz. Yeah, he was he, the oh, computer man. guy. The computer boy. Yeah, he was the <laughs> hacker and ele- like electronics expert. Oh, man. Well, you could take over. For no reason. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so Australia doesn't exist. But Matt, forget about that because that's not even close to the funniest. I one. hope the last one is one you mentioned to me but didn't explain about the last one, mate. I've got about eight of them. Oh, okay. <laughs> like, like... Saved by the Bell is yes, a front for the one. Illuminati. <laughs> I've had to stop myself from reading about this since you mentioned <laughs> well, it. Well, I haven't read much about it. Okay, go on. Um, let's go through it. So the whole basic, the, the whole thing for this is that apparently Saved by the Bell was written and produced by the Illuminati. The, the end game being to influence its young viewers to Satan's influence. Okay, that's mental. So apparently, stuff like and some of the one of the two of like things that I actually did pick up on when they were talking about it was there's a poster of all the characters standing there in their nineties clubber, mm-hmm. and one of the girls uh, is standing at the back and she's doing like a hand sign like that. We'll, we'll say like that. What am I doing on an audio yeah. podcast? Where she's basically she's doing making like a hand sign. Yeah, she's making like a, a ring with a index finger and a thumb, and she's got her other finger sticking up. And apparently, mm-hmm. that makes six six six, which is the sign of the beast. Ipso facto, again. That's supposed the to be Illuminati. a thing that, that <clears throat> Illuminati members like do to recognize one another, isn't it? The six 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 thing. I think it's actually like a. No, thing. you make a make a ring with your finger and your thumb and your index finger, and then that is six six six. Yeah, like that. Yeah, that's so. like a. a that's that's a thing that Illuminati members use to identify themselves. Cool. A- apparently, Matt. <laughs> apparently. All right, okay. Matt. Matt, let me rein you in a little bit, okay? Apparently. Apparently. <laughs> allegedly. Okay. Apparently, that's what members of the Illuminati do. <laughs> Matt, you're getting in deep. Matt. It's not my you fault. Get... I read the Hiram key, and now <clears> I'm <throat> really convinced. confused. <laughs> So there's other stuff, apparently something to do with this, some satanic stuff in the theme tune of the song, although I can't really believe that. I can't remember how the theme tune goes. I can't either, and I have no idea. Um, yeah. Maybe we'll play it at the end of the show. But Screech was wearing a like, <laughs> wizard's outfit. Yeah, there's stuff like, to do with some of the cast members, like Screech was a sexaholic, apparently. Um, he got quite heavily into drugs, and I didn't, think he ended up stabbing somebody. Didn't one of the actors just disappear and no one ever found him? I don't know about that. I think I don't that's know about the thing. That. Yeah. But yeah, there's there's some stuff apparently with some of the cast members after the show where they all, some of them got a little nuts apparently I think I know Screech was one of them. apparently stabbed somebody. Yeah, I think I've heard that. And they before. were saying that the cast members were programmed and influenced by the Illuminati. But I'm just like, <laughs> well, how did we get here? Like, what's going on? Yeah. Um, <laughs> Who apparently... originally came up with that? Who looked to say <laughs> by the bell and went Illuminati? Look, she's pulling that sign. Illuminati. Yeah. She's just doing the okay sign. That's what that <laughs> I is. I think. Um, a lot of that stuff is someone makes a very tenuous link, and then you you will find the other evidence. Yeah, you, that fits. you just create. Yeah, you create it. You link the things together with no actual evidence. Yeah, yeah, and you discount anything that disproves your theory, and you'll only pick up on the things that do. Yeah, I can't believe there's a, there's a thing for that, isn't there? That's what I was trying to say about the flat Earth stuff. Like oh, okay. you, you make your own connections, and you you invent the things to link stuff together because yeah. it doesn't actually exist. No, but get this, Matt. Obama could control the weather as president. Only Obama. Obama, apparently. <laughs> Obama. No, it doesn't say <laughs> the presidents. Yeah, just it President says, Obama. It just says Obama. Okay. To control the weather. How? Um, doesn't go into that. With harp. <clears throat> doesn't, yeah, just <laughs> with the Wind Waker from Zelda. <laughs> yeah. um, no, not a harp. A harp is <clears throat> an H A A R P. Right, okay. The. Okay, don't worry. Don't worry about it. <laughs> you don't know what that is? No, what are you talking about? <laughs> okay. 
it's an actual thing like it was a um <laughs> the high frequency active auroral research program it was like a u.s government thing where oh, they right. tried to invent a device that could control the weather okay like yeah. um in superman 3 Ed, you know I haven't seen Superman. <laughs> you don't even have to <laughs> ask Superman me. Free. Um, it was a real thing in like the early nineties. The government yeah. tried to invent something that could control weather, and if you Google it, like Storm from X Men. Yeah, exactly. There's this the thing that they created is this massive like. Uh, it's in the middle of like a, a research facility. Does it thing. look like the Hadron Collider? No, no, no. It's like a um, like a, a big flat bit of land with loads of like metal towers sticking up and wires right. connecting them all together. It looks mental. It didn't okay. obviously work, but no. like, yeah. <laughs> they turned it on and went, oh shit. We yeah. just connected a, a muse, bunch of wires. There's stuff. a muse song about it. Okay. Well, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. Thanks for, thanks, thanks for that random bit of trivia. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of conspiracy theories about uh, uh, what it actually that's does. That's why I know about it. Ah, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. cool. <laughs> Maybe you can step in and tell me about that one. Um, ionospheric weaponry. Well, apparently they reckon he. The, one of the things was because there was a something like the Benghazi scandal during his administration. Yeah, which I don't know much about. I just know that I've heard the name. But apparently there was a hurricane that hit America at that point, same time as that. And yeah, everyone was yeah. like, "Oh, he did that as a distraction because he was facing a scandal." And it was like, right. <laughs> yeah, wasn't the um the uh the, the what's the word I'm looking for? The um flood in Haiti was during the Obama administration, wasn't it? There was, I think there was a couple of natural disasters. I know yeah. there was the, the one in New Orleans. Yeah. Hurricane Katrina was during his yeah. administration. What other shit went down during Hurricane <laughs> Katrina? <laughs> Loads. Yeah. It was pretty, uh, I think Miami might have been hit by it as well. That was our, that was the Florida one was afterwards. I'm not, I'm, you know what? I'm starting to regret doing conspiracy theories because you look like you're really getting into this. <laughs> you know, like you Matt, sincerely know that Matt, I am into this kind Matt, of thing. Matt, Matt, <laughs> go on. Stop talking because okay. you need to, there's an important news bulletin that's come through. Okay. Right? Breaking news. <laughs> yeah, breaking news. Lizards rule the earth. Oh yeah, well we knew that. 4% we? of US population believe they're controlled by secret ruling lizard class. Yeah. They and, consume human blood for energy. <laughs> I bet it says that in the article. I feel it? like I'm teaching my grandma how to suck eggs here. <laughs> Every conspiracy theory I come out with, I, yeah, I made that. <laughs> like, that was my conspiracy theory. No, it, but do you know where the by lizard... alien lizards that mm. consume human blood for sustenance? Yeah. <laughs> Matt, I'm really Cor- worried correct. about that. I'm really worried about Correct. That. Correct. correct. <laughs> Allegedly. Yeah. Um, do you know where this fa- <laughs> this fan theory came from? <laughs> um, Wasn't um David Icke the guy that like yeah, originally? You know came who David Icke is. I don't know too much about him. No. So he used to be a sports personality. Okay. Um, I think he was like a sports presenter. Yeah. Um, and then out of nowhere, he literally made these declarations about what was going on in the world, about the Illuminati, a secret ruling class, lizard people that was disguised as humans. They mm. drink blood for sustenance. Um, well, it was that all the world, all the major world leaders were lizards, yeah, and right? Yeah, I think like he was one the of the Queen, first people who came up with um, the idea kind of, of stuff. the New World Order. Yeah. And he co- kind of coined this phrase. And before that, he came out with this stuff. He was regarded as quite popular in the UK, and he was quite, I think it was like Question of Sport, the TV show. Over now he's just and, a nut job. And now he goes around doing these really popular lectures where he talks about his theories, and they, they sell out. Like, he... Has got a massive following. Of yeah, people. I've genuinely always wanted to go <laughs> to one. <laughs> I thought you were going to say I've been to all. No, of them, I've always wanted to go to one, but <laughs> mate, I've never I'm not. To. I'm not joking. I'll go with you. Yeah, we should go if they please. Do that. Yeah, definitely. I'm not. I'm not kidding. Yeah, def- I'm 100 percent want to go to one. I Although I'm worried I'm going to get converted. It was like seven or eight, uh, maybe <clears throat> less than that, like six or seven years ago. Um, he was. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> David Icke was on um do you ever listen to the original Russell Brand podcast before he went a bit mental? No. On Radio 2. <clears throat> no. Um David Icke was a guest on that podcast and he was basically like I think they originally invited him on there to kind of take the piss out yeah. of him and be like, uh uh-huh, look at this nut <laughs> wacko nut yeah. job. Come on, but tell me about a lizard. By people. the end of the interview, they were all like Oh shit! Like they all genuinely seemed a bit swayed by it, and that made me research it. And and, and I, uh, there's a lot of conspiracy theories I buy into, but lizard people isn't one of them. Right. Okay. But like, uh, I, you know, it's it, I'd be interested to hear him put his point across because he clearly believes in this kind of thing. Ah, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You not think? No, I. I mean, I don't give this a lot of this stuff time of day. Not the not the more nutty side of things. Mm. In terms of lizard people, I'm like, come on, wake up, wake up, humanity, <laughs> which is probably what he says. Um, 
I know there's, I know there's one conspiracy theory you really believe in. Go Matt, on. And that's that Denver Airport is the epicenter of all evil. Yeah, it's the point on Earth where there's an opening to hell. Yeah. Yeah. Was it correct? Is Denver, Airport, <laughs> is Denver Airport also the one that was in that documentary me you mean you both saw? Yeah, it is the exact same one with all the satanic paintings on the no, walls. No, no, no. With the alien do you remember they were like building a railway underneath it? Yeah, there's Denver International Airport. Yeah, yeah. And there was the guy who was saying, yeah, they're definitely building like an alien airport, like space yeah. station underneath. Yeah, like a, yeah, that's the same, mm. it's the same place. Yeah. And it, and the expert was just some fat guy in <laughs> yeah. a Texas yeah, yeah, yeah. cowboy. Yeah, there's hat. an ancient aliens episode on <laughs> That's the one. Denver yeah. International Airport. Yeah, that's yeah. the one. Um and Denver Airport, for anyone listening who doesn't know much about it, it, it does have some very bizarre like murals on the walls. There's um, loads of really weird ones. Yeah. However, I did look further into it, and there's actually a reason why they're there. So okay, go on. Um, apparently, the murals are part of a ongoing story as you go through the airport about parts of history that are not good, you know, stuff like that. Mm. But there was there were two or three murals that were in the airport which showed a unified planet Earth and all this sort of stuff. But they're no longer in the airport now because of renovation and stuff like that. Okay. So now you're left with these terrifying Nazi-like looking guys in gas masks standing over kids with like AK-47. <laughs> yeah. And with, with rainbows going it over It looks really mental. It's <clears> honestly <throat> mental. If you look up Denver Airport mural, you, yeah. There's like a if giant... you look at it from the sky, it's shaped like a pentagon as well. So just, Or a swastika. Um, yeah, it was, there was, there's ar- arguments for either, depending on how you look at it, yeah. which obviously means it's bullshit. And there's um, the giant blue horse... Stallion statue outside. Yeah. Have you seen that? I have seen that. It's about, yeah. I don't know how tall, about 20 foot tall with glowing red eyes and a blue body. And it's, it's fucking terrifying. I'm like, who, what? Why? <laughs> like, but it is. Um, the Denver like, Airport is the. Uh, more people know about that than you'd think, or more people have heard of the conspiracy theories about that than you think. Yeah. It's one of the more popular ones. I think so. And the, the more popular part of it is that it looks like a swastika from the sky. Yeah. But it doesn't anymore, but like the original photos, it did. But it's just like complete coincidence. It's just, um, yeah. But there's parts of it that were like the, the underground, the bits that go underground were like guarded by armed police and all that kind of thing. Mm. So it's just, it all sounds like an airport. Obviously, there's going to be there was other stuff as well, <laughs> which was a little bit more. Uh, interesting, which was that Denver Airport, um, they're not sure why it was built in the first place because there was a working airport not far from where they built Denver Airport, International mm-hmm. Airport. Um, and it's something like, it cost something like $2 billion to build. It went over budget massively. Um, and it's just this airport in the middle of nowhere that, it, that no one knows why it was built because mm. it's it's superfluous almost to where it is. Um, <clears throat> and they said, like, they just don't. No one understands where a lot of the money went because it's it is a huge, apparently it's like something like I can't remember how big they said it was. It, it was twice the size of Manhattan Island. Fuck, and it's for like, no reason. What? That's crazy. That is mental. Yeah. Um. But in the conspiracy theory, there's like some weird stuff in there. Like they're saying like there's corridors that apparently lead to nowhere, and checkpoints that would disappear before your very eyes. Wow. That was on the video, <laughs> and I was like, right, no, there's not. <laughs> I'm like you've gone too far now. <laughs> you telling me I'm going to go there and I walk to a checkpoint, going hello, yeah, uh, going to Heathrow, and it would just disappear, and I'd be standing there in the cor- empty corridor, going, oh shit, it's happened again. Somebody get me the Ghostbusters. That's crazy. You, you're, I can tell you're into all of this. I do. You, you know that I like conspiracy <laughs> theories, so it's like it's, it's. I know you do. I find them interesting, but in like I said, in a trash way. I discount a lot of them, but sometimes there's maybe one in 20 that I'll be like, oh, that was, there's some interesting stuff there. Some of them terrify me, though. Like, have you heard of the... Um... You're getting into this now, are you? No, yeah, I am. Yeah, the mattress. Are, are we going to have to start a new podcast? Welcome to the internet, colon, Matt's Dark Corner. Conspiracies. Um, yeah. Have you heard of the mattress store? Conspiracy yes. In America? Yeah, I've yeah, read yeah, about that's this That's a pretty popular one. But there's like, um, I mean, crazy, like three, like 3,500 of these mattress stores. And loads of them are really close together. And no one, there's never customers in there. There's never staff. The buildings are huge, all this kind of thing. The general belief is that it's um, like a mafia money laundering front. Yeah. Because like <clears throat> they can they can say that they've sold like, you know, you can buy really expensive mattresses and shit like that, like 3,000, 4,000 pound mattresses. Um, it's just money laundering is the genuine thing that it is. Because there's a, yeah. there was a thing I read on Reddit ages ago where this guy was like, I live, I think it was somewhere like Kentucky or something. And he had... There was like three of these mattress superstores, like 
all within like 10, 10 within uh, eye within eye shot of each other. Yeah. They're all the same store. Yeah, I saw this. I actually, it was weird you bring this up because I actually saw this the other day um, and I was looking into <clears> it. And it was really interesting. This guy, I think it all started when a guy Google searched uh, the mattress. I think it's like Mattress Depot or something like that. Yeah, it's called. something like that. Um, he, he Google searched it in his hometown and there was something like 10 results. And when you looked, there was like one opposite. There's one next door to one. There's one across the street from it. You go down the road like half a mile. There's two more. And yeah. it, like, if you look at Google Map, it was like, what the fuck? Yeah. Like and every there's... other building was almost this shop. Yeah, they report like crazy high like sales and all that kind and, of stuff. Um, but then no they... one ever sees people in there and things like no. that. So. And they were saying like the average statistic is someone buys a new mattress about every eight years. Seven, How the hell seven, is that? Seven to ten years, I think. I've done mattress research. I bought a new mattress recently. <laughs> from them. Kind of, no, not from them. It was full of money. <laughs> <laughs> it was full of dead money. It was full of aliens. <laughs> dead people's money. Um, <laughs> had alien yeah. corpses in it and Illuminati. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I think maybe we should wrap it up for this episode. <laughs> Um, this one gets too paranoid. This one's been a bit of a like a bit of a bumpy ride, but but a good bumpy ride, that's like a right. roller coaster. That's what editing. Um, right, that's where the power of editing. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know if anyone is gonna give us any feedback on it, but like, if people want to hear less of us talking about serious <laughs> stuff, then I'm completely cool with that. But it is interesting to talk about because we didn't get to the bit where I talked about microwaving urine in shops. <laughs> <laughs> we'll save it for next time. <laughs> we should do a consp- like a proper full on conspiracy theory special episode at some point. Oh god, Matt, um, I'm worried. <laughs> a four hour episode where Matt. Have you heard of the Whistling Man? Oh god, no. no okay, keep, we'll save it. Keep we'll it. save it. That's a really good one. Um, yeah, but hopefully people enjoyed listening to this. It's probably like a good fifty percent less laughs than a normal one. Um, we'll be back next time yeah. with more goofs we'll, we'll be back we'll next eject. time with more funny stuff um, I will try and edit this to make it funnier <laughs> somehow are you going to call me track going Ed, say a joke I'll record it down the phone <laughs> yeah. and I'll splice I'll a, it in I'll put a laugh track in <laughs> um, anyway yeah this is this is our podcast and it's good so please <laughs> tell your friends about it leave us a rating a review um, our listening stats are going pretty well cool. like we've got um episode one and two uh episode one's got 101 downloads episode two's got like 90 odd yeah um this one's got none because i haven't released it yet yeah um but yeah it's, it's pretty good i'm pretty happy with that so that's cool yeah we'll see um and we'll yeah we'll talk to you next time bye bye <laughs>